Hi friends, welcome back to episode two of Fiberdose. I am Gabriella from Hello Gabriella on Instagram. Am I supposed to introduce myself like I'm from Instagram? Um, well, I went ahead and made a list this time, so it feels a little bit more organized for me. And instead of having a longer episode where I'm just talking to you guys, I actually have a little tutorial for you today um, that I will share after we chit chat a little bit. So I made, <laughs> so I've kind of been obsessed with making pom-poms. Um, I really wanted to make a little pom-pom banner. Well, originally I wanted like those little like felt wool pom-poms, but I didn't have, I didn't know how to make them. And so I was like, well, let's just try regular pom-poms with a pom-pom maker and see how that goes. And so I made it. And look, it's so pretty. I love it so much. It makes me happy. I'm really big on aesthetics no matter what I'm doing, but especially where I'm sitting for like eight hours a day, even though sometimes I work from my bed. I'm super productive there. Anyway, so I like to like have my space kind of like be a little bit more cozy and my aesthetic and kind of bring me joy throughout my day. And so I went ahead and made this little pom-pom banner to kind of like top off my little aesthetic, my little area, my corner of my corner of the world. And I also made these cute little pom-pom flowers. And so that's what the tutorial is for today. It's just a little tutorial of how to put them together. I show you from the start. If you're not familiar with how to make a pom-pom in the first place, then maybe you'll enjoy that. If it's something you already know how to do, cool. You should watch it anyway. Um, but before we get into that tutorial, I want to chat with you just about some things I have going on and also take accountability for my whips. So the first thing that I have to share with you is my progress on my little rainbow top. Ah, it's coming out so good. I was talking to my friend Yesenia and I was like, wow, did you notice that I'm going colorful? And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, you know, I have a project that's really colorful. She goes, oh, the one on the podcast? She goes, I guess that is colorful for you. It is. Okay. This has purples and it has a little bit of green and blues. So this is very colorful for me. Okay. It's still going to be like a there's no color work, but I'm working on moving out of my comfort zone and mixing colors and kind of putting them together because even though I do have kind of a pretty solid palette that I usually like to work with and decorate with and dress in, <laughs> um, I do, I do actually like colors. So I'm trying to work those colors together now. And so this was an easy way for me to just make a colorful top and have um, the color kind of all in one. And so as I finish this design, I will share with y'all and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to finish the body of this tonight. Maybe not all the fixings and finishings and stuff, but I've already split for the sleeves. This one's kind of be separated a little bit. Make sure that string doesn't come out. Okay, so I've already split for the sleeves. And it has this pearl ridge right down the middle because it's gonna be a faux cardigan. Yay! Um, I don't know if anyone else has this issue, but if you're usually like bigger busted, sometimes when you have like things that are really flowy and um, you button them up, sometimes they show a little bit. And so, and also I don't ever really wear anything like unbuttoned. It's usually buttoned. If I have a button up shirt, I don't just have it like on top. It's usually buttoned up. So I decided I'm going to make a faux button band right down the front. And it's just a simple raglan um, construction. There's no short row shaping since it's a very airy, a very airy gauge. I didn't find that the short row shaping was going to be completely necessary. I have tried it on and it fits pretty well, but you will have to wait until next week to see that because I want to show it on when it's completely finished. So I'm going to try to get through that tonight and hopefully that's ready for next week. I'm wondering, 
I know someone's probably gonna be looking at this like girl you're crazy no you can't finish with just that but I'm wondering if I could finish the body with just this last skein like I know I'm not gonna be able to like pick up for the sleeves it's just gonna be short sleeve but I know I'm not gonna be able to pick up for the sleeves and do the button band and finish with just this left but I'm excited it's kind of like a little challenge in my head do you ever make challenges up for yourself that you don't actually have to meet but you do it anyway that's me so I'm trying to see if maybe I can finish the body with just what I have left because surprisingly I'm still only on the first skein I did buy four skeins of this yarn thinking that um I was gonna need a lot more but to be fair I was thinking of maybe going the crochet route so I didn't want to like not have enough yarn for that and if this is going as planned, I might still have enough yarn for the crochet version, but I, I'd have to like swatch, do the yardage, all that kind of stuff. And so anyway, I'm really excited about that. It's still bringing me a lot of joy, super easy TV knitting, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to share that pattern with you next time. And I, this whole podcast is not going to be all designing. It's just sometimes on my stories, I feel like I don't want to share too much because it or even on my grid, I don't want to share too much because I don't know if I'm going to stick to it. I don't know if maybe I'm not going to write a pattern for it. Maybe it's just going to be something for me. But this is definitely something that I want to share with you because I have a little idea of how we could do it together. I promise. I said Last time I said next time. This time I promise next time. I'll share the details on that. But yeah, so it's just bringing me a lot of joy, something easy to work on that I can still sit with the boys while they're doing activities or sit waiting for my curbside and knit a few stitches on it it's just really it literally is a mindless project especially with the simple increases the like no short row shaping anything like that it's just something really fun to work on and I can't wait until I can share more and you can work on it with me next time um so yeah let's move along another thing I wanted to share mentioning beverages okay I already took it out of the sleeve because I wanted to show it separate but I shared this on my story and a lot of people liked it. So I just thought I wanted to share on my YouTube so you can get like an actual idea of my hydro jug. This is my mini hydro jug. So this is the mini size and I think it's the smallest size that they have. I may be wrong, but it's 32 ounces. So it's half the size of the regular one. And look at this little sleeve that I got. Kind of. Ooh, does it kind of match? I know it's not white, it's more of a cream color, but let's see. It does, it kind of, it's given me, this is, maybe I should name this pattern Hydro Jug. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, but yeah, um, the colors obviously are calling to me. And so here's the little sleeve. And if you're not familiar with the regular Hydro Jug, I'll show you. So here's the original. These bad boys hold 64 ounces and the mini holds 32. I really like the mini though because it's kind of like an all-in-one versus the big hydro jugs. If you want a straw you can buy a separate straw but it's like it just kind of like sits on the inside there and you just kind of like push it in and have to pop the cap on. It's it's annoying so I don't even know what happened to it. I think I gave it to the kids and they lost it. They were just like throwing it around the house and then um this one actually comes with a built-in straw and that's my favorite part because I just sit it on my desk and I fill it up twice a day yeah twice a day and there's my full water consumption it's just let me show you and then the straw is like very bendy super easily like you could just take it out throw it in the dishwasher or whatever and so it's just a really cute way to get your water consumption and I just wanted to um sure about it because it's so cute my sister got it for my birthday actually but I haven't really had a place to be like hey everyone look at my hydro jug so anyway that's a way to stay cute and here are here's my other one this was my original one they don't I feel like they don't look that big on screen even though maybe you are looking at it like dang but there's the two originals and so you can kind of get an idea of the size. They have all different colors and styles. If you want just like black, they have black. If you want just white, they got white. Whatever. So anyway, moving on. What movie is that from? 
I don't know. That's from a movie. Here we go. Oh, I wish I could think of it. It'll probably come to me. If you remember the name of that movie, just put it in the comments because it's probably going to bother me until I remember what it is. Anyway, okay. Next, I wanted to stay on the topic of like flowery, floral, bright things. And since it's spring, that means I had to change up my aesthetic on my screens too. So that means my background for my iPad, my computer, my phone. I know I have a lot, a lot of devices, but I work from home. So, and also when I used to run my business full time, it required a lot of different screens to get things out to people on the intranets. So I always change my screen savers to go with my current aesthetic or their current season. And I made one for all of you all to download completely free. So I'm gonna link that in the show notes and it'll just be called like flower power wallpaper. And if you're interested, you can just download that. It works for all the devices. I had a friend who test it for me to see if it worked on her screen and it did. So you don't have to worry if it's for your iPhone or iPad. I have it on my computer screen, which let me see, actually I have it here on the iPad screen. This is the pink one. And I did include a few different colors. So if blue or purple or teal or a lighter pink is more your thing, I included, I think five or six different color options um, just for you to enjoy. It was just something I wanted to make and I was like, what am I gonna do with it? I made it for myself because I'm very picky on my backgrounds. But I was like, oh, I'll share it with my new YouTube fam. So anyway, that's fun. But here is another thing I was so excited to share with you. Okay. So last year, was it last last summer? Oh my God, it's almost been a year. Um, last summer, I designed this top that I'm wearing. It's called the Secret Garden Top. But I realized that my crochet skills weren't there yet to be able to write a crochet pattern. Hence my last episode talking about learning to design crochet. Um, and so now that I'm a little bit, I, like I'm not really having any hiccups on that. I think one, the only issue I had so far was one of my YouTube videos wasn't working, which that, that pattern comes with tutorials that I film myself. And so it was kind of important because I wanted all different skill levels to be testing that pattern and then the YouTube videos weren't working. So anyway, the pattern's going really well. That's a good sign. That means that I think I'm ready to move on to this sample. I am I am uh, designing that lavender color one or lilac color one that I shared last episode, but that sample's not done. So I'll still need to like size and grade that into multiple sizes. But this one is done because I did it last year and I made it for my own body. So anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about the yarn. Um, I'm using Stitch and Story Secret Garden Yarn. And the color is Dahlia Beige. And it's it's definitely very Gabriella, but Stitch and Story unfortunately closed their doors in... I'm not sure what month, but they recently closed their doors. So unfortunately, I have a lot of this yarn and not really um, able to recommend the brand because they, you can't get it anymore. That's unfortunate, but I really like this. So I'm thinking that once this pattern is done, I'll do yarn support for one of my testers. So look out for that. If you like this color, if you're like, girl, that's too plain, then sorry, get your own yarn. <laughs> but I'm really excited because this pattern was, I basically wrote the instruction through the yoke and then I had an issue right here and I wasn't sure how to give the instruction to keep going after that. Well, now that I know a little bit more about how crochet patterns work, I think I'm able to finish it. And let me stop rambling and stand up and show you the pattern. Just a second. Okay. So it's a round, round yoke, or I'm sorry, circular yoke top and it's short sleeve. It is kind of lacy. So you see I have like these little eyelets here and you can really see through it. You can wear something under it if you really want to. Well, I, I made it so that it's not too revealing, but it still has kind of like a summery, warm weather look. Okay. So that pattern is going to be coming soon. I am getting back into the process, but I won't have a testing call probably until I'm done writing the pattern because last time I jumped the gun a little bit too, too soon. 
and then realized I was stuck. So I'm going to go ahead and start fresh, take new pictures for this pattern and um, have a brand new testing call. That way, if people are still interested, they can test it for me. But this sweater being a big, not a total beginner, but a semi beginner, um, this top took me about a week to make a 48 inch bust. And it has about two inches of positive ease. So just to give you an idea of how quick this pattern is, it, this yarn, I'm sorry, this yarn is a worsted weight. But I just love the stitch definition of this. It's a 60% cotton and 40% acrylic. I didn't even know. I actually don't like to wear my acrylic. Ugh. I don't like to wear my acrylics during the summer or warmer months, like I mentioned, but um, this one I never actually get hot in. I've been able to wear it out while it's pretty warm, and maybe it's the lazy detail at the bottom too, but it keeps me super cool. And so it's a way for me to like wear fiber during the summer, and I feel like you don't get to do that a lot in Texas. Even though you can knit like spring patterns, short sleeve patterns, I feel like you still don't get to do it a lot because you really need to always really have just like a t-shirt or an airy dress or something. Maybe that's just me, because I'm a big girl. I get hot, or I get hot. So anyway, one more time, I'm gonna show you an up close of that, of the yarn, just so you can get an idea of why I love it so much. See how like, it's really tightly spun? I love it so much. I wish I had this in every single color. All right, well, the last thing I want to talk about is the new pattern I'm starting. I got this pattern a couple of weeks ago because I was like, okay, we have this, we have this yarn. It's really pretty, but how am I going to put it together? Like, I, it, it's a whole palette, and my original idea was to crochet something with it, except it's just like the, I guess the flow isn't really what I'm going for. So I decided I still want to use the palette together, but I didn't know how to put it together. Um, so I went ahead and found a pattern from Stephen West. And it's kind of an older pattern, actually. I think, oh my gosh, it's 2023. This pattern is like nine years old, but I saw a picture on my explore page of the pattern and it was in similar colors that I like. So I was like, oh, this would be perfect for that yarn because I knew that I wanted to keep the yarn together. I just didn't know what I was gonna do with it. I'll, let's just, let me just show you. So this is the pattern. It's the Vertices Unite, or is it Vertices Unite? But I'm not always able to pair things together. And I think that that's why I typically used to design in solid colors. Um, I guess technically I still am designing in solids. But anyway, I wasn't always great with pairing things together. So like, for example, like contrasting colors for color work, like choosing all the colors for a round yoke top or something like that. Um, and this pattern was kind of like straight to the point. And it has a, I'll just go ahead and pop a picture so you can see it a little bit more clearly. But it's going to allow me to work with just five colors. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and the most yardage I'll need is 320 of my, uh, of color B. And so I just thought it would be a really cool way to put my palette together, but also accept working with colors together. Maybe that doesn't even make sense. Does that make sense? I guess just color pairing. You know, I just, I never do it. I've done it twice on a pattern that I wrote for Lion Brand. And I also did it for the same pattern. Now that I'm thinking about it. It was the same pattern, but I rewrote it once um, I decided it was time for like a revamp. It was the Roads Traveled, Roads Traveled Cow. And I'll pop the original here. So this is the Lion Brand version that I originally designed. And then this one here is my revamp of that pattern. So you can see that I did away with the, um, the bandana cowl look. And I actually used my own hand dyed colors from when I was dyeing yarn. So anyway, I thought that this pattern would be a great way to kind of mix my palette and before I jump into brighter colors, which I, I am getting brighter colors, 
but I'm just not using them yet. Still scared because I don't want to, I don't want to waste and like make something that I'm not going to wear. I have two little ones and I don't have all the time in the world to be knitting and crocheting. So the time that I do have, I'm very intentional with what I'm making. And yeah, if you're wondering about this little binder, this is a Coco Knits. Uh, maybe it's called a folio. I don't know. I'll link it in the bottom because I'm not sure what it's called. But this is just a little um, kind of like craft type, craft textured magnetic folder that holds your patterns. And so it comes with these little, these little magnets. That way, if you are a paper pattern kind of person, you don't have to worry about just throwing it in your bag or forgetting it because you're not going to forget this big old thing. And also, if you like to do color work or anything like that, you can stick it to, you can stick the pattern up here with the magnets and use them to kind of like follow along wherever you are and just have it kind of sitting there at the desk so you can, you know, read your pattern along. But I don't, I've never been the kind of person that can just like knit while I'm looking at a pattern and keep going. Like I always have to like set my work down. Okay, what's the next instruction? Set it down. What's the next instruction? But I really like having my patterns at least nice and neat until I'm done. I don't know why, because I'm just gonna recycle the paper. I don't know, but I'm just like that. I used to keep them in little plastic inserts. I don't do that anymore. I don't even know what happened to them. They're somewhere. I never get rid of anything, but they're somewhere. And I just, the plastic route wasn't for me because I felt like the plastic would get crinkled and then the paper would get crinkled. So if that works for you, good for you. It didn't work for me. So this is the route I'm going. So anyway, let me show you the colors that I decided to use for that pattern. So you need five colors. And this is a cashmere merino blend from La Bienname. Isn't it so pretty? It's a little bit more brown than what's coming out. And it's a little bit like a uh, wobbly or wavy, wobbly, wavy, wavy, wobbly, because I frogged something else. But I actually have three skeins of this yarn and I've just been hoarding it because I wanted to use it in a solid solid color something for the longest time, but obviously that didn't happen. So I'm like making myself just go for it. Just go for it. Okay. And so this is the first color. And this is also La Bienname. See, I don't always work with acrylics. I really love Amy's yarn, but look at this. Look at this one. I bet you didn't think I was going to pull out this, this orangey. It's like, it's like super deep burnt orange, almost like Texas Longhorns. Ah, oh, you're not gonna be able to unsee it. Anyway, so this is the second color and this is the same, this is the same yarn. The pattern does call for fingering weight, but I don't care because I want to use these yarns. And also I plan to go up to a size five needle. So that's probably not even gonna change the gauge, but it doesn't matter. This is what I'm using. These are both sport weights. And then I have this super, super pale light pink. It's like, um, like the palest pink you will ever see. This is also La Bienname and this is the Felix base. And usually, um, I think people hold this with something else, but when I saw it, it was so dainty. Oh, let's see. Okay. There we go. It was so dainty and delicate. And I believe this is just a two ply. And I knit a little bit with it, but I was just kind of trying it out um, to see what it looked like. And it's definitely beautiful knit just single stranded. So I'm going to use this as a fingering weight, but I think technically Felix is a lace weight. So anyway, we're just going <laughs> to, we're going to keep it trucking. Okay. Because I get so hung up on the details and I'm trying to not be that way anymore. And so I am telling myself, it's okay to experiment. It's okay to just move forward. And that's what this pattern is going to be for me. So I'm really excited about it. The next color is again, such, it's such a Gabby color. <laughs> I'm not even sure the, the color of this one. Um, it's like a, a tan off white. <laughs> So difficult it's lighter than what I have on so I mean it's definitely like in my realm of of uh like 
off whites, I guess. I never really work with white, but off whites is like my thing, like a beige tan. I'm gonna have to include a picture of my phone case <laughs> because I'm recording on my phone, but it's this color. <laughs> I had a bright pink one on there, but I was like, oh, I'm gonna tone it down a little bit. So anyway, um, this is from, this is a fingering weight from Laurel Hill. Their line of yarns is called Variations, and this is their fingering weight. I had originally had a different idea for this as well. That's why they're already all wound up. They were all different projects from like a year, two years ago, but I've just been like holding them, holding on to them, except for these last two. These two I just got at the Hill Country Weavers Retreat recently that I went to um, with my friend Jasmine from Pom Pom. And so those are new. And these originally were gonna be worked together in kind of like a striped shawl, but I didn't wanna to have to design a striped shawl. So it's kind of perfect that I came across this pattern. And then the last color, the last color is, oh, oh no, it looks more brown. It's actually more of a reddish, a reddish brown it's not super red it's like so this color was called rosewood and it was one of my fastest sellers when I was dyeing yarn it is naturally dyed with what was red I think this was walnut and was it avocado hmm I don't know I think this is walnut and avocado if I remember differently well by the time I do the show notes I'll have looked to see what it was but for now it's walnut and avocado but this is the last color and so this is hand dyed by me and it is probably like half a skein no maybe probably like three-fourths of a skein yeah three-fourths and I just think that these colors look like absolutely gorgeous together so let me put them together and show you if I can figure out how to hold them all. Ooh. Oh yeah, they look so good. So yeah, that's gonna be my next kind of mindless knitting project that I'm, it's probably not gonna be mindless because there's still some instruction, but this is gonna be like my TV knitting project or my in-between knits if y'all want to make one of those with me let me know I'm not saying it needs to be a make along or anything but if maybe enough people are interested we could all do it together especially if you're like me and you have a problem with just solids and textures my friend uh Rebecca of Cozy Autumn Knits if you watch this I'm talking to people like you because <laughs> we were both very like just cozy solid colors only you know but now I'm team color and I'm team contrasting color and I'm trying to get out of that realm but it's going to be a process so it's going to be fun watching back through these videos to see if I actually get to a point where I'm not just working with pink and brown all the time this counts it's orange it's a brownie orange, but it's orange. So anyway, that's the last thing I have before I show y'all the tutorial of how to make these cute little pom-pom uh, flowers. I had, I'll show you some pictures. I'll insert a picture here. But I just had it kind of sitting on my desk and it made me really happy. I'm all about having just like cute little aesthetic things around me. Like I have my little plant and I have, um, that little notebook I'm still mirrored when am I gonna get used to that see I have like that little notebook it's just on a canvas and then I also have that little mushroom and so I just like to put like pretty things around me if I'm gonna be sitting here for eight hours a day working on a screen just things that keep my mood bright and I'm telling y'all it works so if you have a job where you have to sit in one spot most of the time or you have your own space I highly recommend decorating it to your aesthetic because it's going to bring you joy throughout the day even when you're working I mean lucky for me my work includes fiber so it's usually like a good time but there's some days when I'm like hitting like writer's block or I'm getting writer's block and I'm not able to really concentrate and I'm just like so frustrated but like having this kind of cozy corner that makes me happy makes me happy you know so just something um to try out and also drink your water with your hydro jug. <laughs>
Okay, so before we get started, I'm going to show you the yarns that I used for this project. So for the, um, let's see, can you see it? For the one, I guess the beige looking one, I used this Lion Brand Rose Apothecary yarn. Uh, it's from their Schitt's Creek line. It's this one here. And my tips for you is to choose a yarn that's worsted or lighter because that's how you're going to be able to get a more even puff. I found that using like chunky yarn like Lion Brand Thick and Quick or even especially don't use a roving because you won't really get a good like a uh, shape. It won't look super full because the roving will kind of like It'll look like little strands. Anyway, don't use it. And I think in the video I even have one that I made my son. So I'll show you all the comparison. But this is what I used for that one. And then the middle part is also Lion Brand. It's this Lion Brand Respun. It's sustainable stitching and it's 100% recycled, recycled polyester. And this is in the color Corn Silk. So I wanted like a yellow, but I wanted something a little bit more muted. And so it kind of has like a little bit of a heathery look. It is a little bit, let's see, is that pilling? Maybe, I don't know. I've taken it like all over the house. But um, it has a little bit of a heathered look regardless, even when it was brand new and when you knit with it or crochet with it. And so I used that for the middle part. And yeah, for the middle part of the other one, I also used Schitt's Creek. And then, oh, I guess it's kind of a, a Lion Brand project. I'm not getting paid for it. I paid. <laughs> anyway, um, so this pound of love was perfect too because like I mentioned, I don't want you don't want to go too thick and also like a super coarse yarn might hurt your fingers as you're winding it. So I used this. I feel like pound of love is kind of like a lighter yarn. It says medium, but I would say it's like a lighter worsted weight. And this is in the color pumpkin pie. So pretty. Uh, is orange going to be my new color? Is that going to be my new thing? I don't know. I just thought it looked really good with the little um, middle part being that off brown and even or off white, even though they're like um, contrasting. I feel like they still kind of like go together for a very Gabriella palette. And um, as you can see, I used it there in my pom poms as well. If you're wondering about the other colors I use for my pom pom banner I use this big twist in the color light rose I will say that these ones were that's why I didn't make a flower in this but they were a little bit rough on my hands I felt like um I was getting some burning on my finger when I was wrapping it so many times because when you're wrapping for the pom-pom you will have to wrap quite a few times around and as you're getting going you know you want to go faster and faster and faster and this kind of burned my finger a little bit. So it, that's why I ended up sticking to just having the pink on the banner. And what other color do I have? Oh, that's a Lion brand. I don't have the labels for the other ones, I'm sorry. But I know that they are also Lion brand. I'm thinking one of them was a Wool Ease. But I'll link all the colors below so that I don't have to sit here and think about it while you're watching me. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. It's super simple, straightforward. I just thought it was something fun that you could add a cozy touch in your own colors to your desk or cozy corner or anywhere in your house that you're thinking, hanging them up on your wall like I did. It's just something cute to do. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. Okay, so the materials you're gonna need are a darning needle, a pair of little scissors for shaping, a pair of sharp, um, bigger scissors for cutting the pom-pom and then a little pom-pom maker. And this one came in a set of two, but I'm using the two inch little one. Okay, so I like to do like the center pull thingy majig from the center of the skein. I just find that it helps me wrap a little bit faster, but it's totally up to you. That's optional. Um, and so I set it on my right side and then I'm going to open my pom-pom maker and I'm actually wrapping around both of these two um, arches here. So both of them you're going to wrap around because eventually you're going to cut and just make sure that you're wrapping all the way to the edges. That way your pom-pom's not too uneven. Just as close as you're able to. 
So just keep wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. Sorry, I started off at the bottom. I act like I've never filmed a tutorial before. But that little string that keeps coming loose, don't really worry about it. Um, I just kind of hold it and then until I'm able to wrap over it and kind of secure it down. But sometimes I just get annoyed and I just let it let it go. It's not going to unravel anything at the end. It's not really going to change the result. But see how I'm getting towards the ends of those arches. And you're just going to wrap pretty thickly until the bottom of your arch is a little bit more flat. So I'm just going to keep wrapping and speed this up so I can show you what I mean. Okay, so right here at the bottom, this arch is what I mean. It's a little bit more full and flat. And once I'm done, I'm just going to close it up. And then I'm going to snip this tail here. doesn't really matter if it's long, short, just kind of out of your way. And then you're going to begin filling up the other side the exact same way that we did on the first side. So just use your thumb. And if you want to wrap it that way, that's cool, but I just remembered I don't like to get really far <laughs> wrapping that way, so I went ahead and switched back. And honestly, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. So I'm going to speed this up one more time. Okay, so once you have both of them fully wrapped, you're going to just snip that end as well and then you want about a foot of yarn from the same color so my yarn here you could do about a foot and a half doesn't really matter you just want to be able to wrap it around your pom-pom once we've cut so go ahead and get your longer scissors and you're going to just go down the middle so I actually like to hold those two um, ends that open so I start on the other side and just be careful when you're doing this not to snip your finger, but this is why I do like to use my um, sewing scissors because they're extra razor sharp. Anyway, so you're just going to split all the way down the middle and you're going to do that on both sides. Be careful when you get to the edge because I have cut myself before many, many moons ago, but I did cut myself. So there's my first side of my pom-pom and you can kind of get an idea of how it's working. And you're just going to cut the other side the same way. Cut. 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 It's so much faster with these scissors. And don't worry, I was watching my finger very closely. I did not cut myself. Okay, and there's the beginning of our pom-pom. So now you're going to take that extra string and you're going to wrap it through the middle of those arches. So see how I just kind of put it through the top, through the middle. And if you're not really going to be touching this flower too many times, you don't really have to worry about getting it super secure. I just like to tie it on one side and then I tie it on the other side. So definitely this is not something I would give your little ones because they could be a choking hazard if they were to pull out if they were to pull out that um the little bits of cut string and on this side i'll go ahead and just tie it twice there we go okay i'm gonna tie it again three times thrice what i'm gonna tie it one more time thrice if that's not a word anyway and then you can go ahead and open up those arches one by one don't do it too quickly um you just don't want any of those strands to pop out see like that's the end where i told you don't worry about it it eventually doesn't matter because it just falls out when we first started wrapping and then you're gonna pull these two apart and there's our pom-pom and so I hold the little tails there and then I usually like to hit it on the side of something hard like the side of a cabinet or the side of a table leg just to kind of like fluff it up. So I'm being really gentle here but normally I bang it against something really hard. And now I'm going to use my little scissors and I'm just going to begin trimming. So you can see it has a couple of ends that need trimming. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go around and shape it up. You can use your long scissors too for just if you want to but I like to be super cute and precise because I'm filming a tutorial and this is how I trim up my pom-poms
Yay, and now you have your pom-pom. Okay, so go ahead and clean your space up. I highly recommend doing this in between each color um, because the fluff is annoying. And you're just gonna put it back together and do the same thing six more times for your other color. So if you want your petals to be this color, you'll do, you'll do them six times, make six pom-poms, and then one for your middle color. And I'll meet you at the end here so I can show you how to put it together. Okay, so at this point you should have six pom-poms for your petals and one pom-pom for your middle color. And I just kind of like to arrange them so I can see what's going on. And I put all the tails at the bottom, but it really doesn't matter, I found out. But it makes the last part a little bit easier because once you string them together you'll see that you can kind of maneuver them but i just like to see visually where everything is gonna go okay so i have them in a row now i'm gonna go ahead and grab my darning needle and i'm gonna use my main color to string everything together so i have about a yard to a yard and a half i'm just gonna snip that and string it through my um darning darning needle and you'll see that this is pretty much like a simple task you just find the, the center point of each pom-pom so center right there and I'm just gonna push it through and you can kind of feel the tension to know if you're going all the way through and just kind of don't like do them too tightly um, at the beginning just make sure you're finding the center point all the way around And I'm just doing them in the circle. That way it's a little bit easier to just kind of make sure everything stays where it needs to be. I've done this a different way. That was just a tail. Remember that one that I told you didn't really matter. So as you can see, they just easily fall out. So I'm going to string through all six of these. And then I'm going to actually secure those um, two ends together but not very tightly because you kind of want this done loosely so you can rearrange and hang them as you want to so I'm just going to tighten it a little bit you can see it coming together it looks so cute I'm going to space them out just a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and tie those two ends together The kids think it's funny. I think it's cute. Okay. So once those are together, just kind of tighten it the way that looks good to you. I would suggest not too tight. Um, that way you can just kind of space things out because once you hang them on the wall, things will kind of move around. And if you wanted to, you could always get like a felt backing and glue these on. But I just knew that like the back was going to be hidden. So that was completely fine to me. So I'm just kind of uh, maneuvering them so that all the tails are towards the back. And that's why I said it wasn't too important to make sure that the front was, or I'm sorry, that the tails were at the back. Because you can twist them and just kind of put them in the direction you want. So I'm going to kind of go straight across so I'm going to go through one pom-pom, which is one of my petals, and then I'm going to go through the middle of that center pom-pom, okay? So right across, one, two, three, or one, two, three, or one, two, three. And I don't want to really cut anything, so I'm just going to go through this side one here. And once you kind of string it across, you really can't see it through the little puffs of the pom-pom. So it, it just really hides itself. Okay, so I went through one petal and through the middle. And now I'm going to go through the one right across. And that's all it takes is it really just secures it down like that. There's another tail that I didn't care to, to hold down too securely. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over. And now I'm just going to simply tie all these together. I know you're probably expecting so much more, like maybe weaving in those ends, which you can do if you want. And then, like I said, secure on maybe a felt back or a piece of cardboard. That way it doesn't like flop around. But my vision for these is I was going to put them directly on the wall. So I'm just kind of tying everything to make sure everything's secured. So if it's like 
thrown on the ground by one of my kiddos that everything just kind of is already in place. And I'm tying everything onto that um, middle color, which is pretty easy. I'm just kind of going around in a circle and tying them all together to secure them. And that's pretty much all it is to it. Looks like a little chandelier from the other side, but as you can see, things are able to kind of move around. That way nothing's permanent and I kind of can decide where I like things. Any extra strings or tails, just tie those right back to the back and you can kind of wrap around one of the strings to kind of like tassel it, but I didn't really find it necessary. I kind of played around to see what worked, but this method seemed to work just perfect for me so I'm just securing them all and then we can go ahead and hang up our pom-pom all right well now that I have all of my tails secured by just tying them together I'm telling you I really wanted this to be just like a straightforward tutorial because once you see them on my wall that's exactly what the back looks like and it allows you to kind of hang from different pom-poms depending on what angle you like it at and then once everything is secured, you can just turn it over and decide how to put it on your wall. I really wanted this to be a very minimal supplies project and I'm really happy with the result. And let me know if you make these too. Aww. Okay friends, well I hope that you enjoyed that quick little tutorial and thank you again for supporting episode two of Fiberdose. Um, I am really enjoying seeing people connect again and seeing familiar names on my YouTube or on Instagram saying, hey, I watch your YouTube. That's been really nice. So I feel like my, my point of starting this YouTube is already starting to show itself and prove itself um, in this process. I'm really excited to be sharing more than just pictures and short stories, even though my stories are funny. If you watch my stories, I love to share memes or reels or TikToks. Um, and so that's always a good time over there. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you and I will see you next time. Bye.